following lecture was produced by Glorian Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. We are going to talk about uh, self-remembering, self-observance. In order to understand self-observance and self-remembrance, we have to study ourselves, ourselves. Let us begin with the physical body. Remember that our physical body is the outcome of two uh, elements, our mother and father. So our physical body have, uh, I mean the physical body has the, we call the inheritance the the genotype in our genes when we study the root of the physical body we discover that the original cell had uh, 48 chromosomes each chromosome has about 100 genes and the genes are precisely the vehicle of that that we call ego. Our own defects and vices and errors, etc. And the psyche, of course, which is bottled up within them. So, the physical body is a vehicle that we have in order for that inheritance to act in this three-dimensional world. Remember that in the ego is where we have that that we call karma, cause and effect. The ego is the origin of karma. So the physical body that we have is the outcome of that karma. The egos need uh, to manifest those elements that we call genes that will vibrate according with their their own uh, vibration with their own level. That's why we have the parents that we have. Because those genes belong to our father and mother. They cooperate in the sexual act in order to mix those genes that will eventually create the physical body that we have. So therefore, the physical body is uh, a house, we will say, 
that we have in order to survive in this three-dimensional world. But remember that we are not the physical body because we were attracted as a magnet from the fifth dimension. Normally the habitat of the ego is the fifth dimension. Right now, from the ego point of view or a psychic point of view, we are in the fifth dimension. This is precisely what we have to comprehend when we uh, think about uh, or when we want to know about self-observation and self-remembrance. The Master Samael on the Or always tell us that we have to feel that we are inside the body. Fortunately, we always think that we are the body. But the body is just a vehicle. Even though, because we are within, everything that happens to the physical body, we sense it. We receive the pain the, or, or the happiness, the enjoyment or, or, that we receive through the senses, through the physical body. <coughs> see, see that the physical body has five senses. And this is how we sense life. Our sight, our ears. Right now, for instance, I look at you, you are looking at me through your eyes. You are listening through your ears. And you are smelling this uh, beautiful place, nature. And uh, you can even taste it. If you sharp your sense of taste, you can taste the air in your tongue. We were eating, of course, before, so we were enjoying our sense of taste. And the sense of touch, which is always uh, manifested and acting through the skin, especially to the hands that has uh, those nerves that allow us to uh, see, uh, verify things to the sense of touch. But the organ that is uh, more uh, sensitive, related with the sense of touch, is the sexual organ. So you can see there how the psyche, through the physical body, senses everything in the physical world. So, if we observe anything, we observe it to the senses. So we, got to, we talk about self-observation. It is obvious that we are talking about the senses. We know that the root of any impression is in the senses. When you want to analyze any ego, uh, Fortunately, you have to go into your senses. When you go there to the very root of those senses, then you discover how your ego manifests. So the physical body in, indeed is a marvelous vehicle that unfortunately is utilized by the ego. And the ego is nothing but a bad trans transformer. What we have inside that is ego is just a wrong transformation of all of those impressions of life that we receive from the five senses. The physical body was given unto us in order to understand life in this three-dimensional world because that is the duty of the consciousness 
to transform life. When the consciousness transforms life in the right way, then it grows. Our goal, of course, is to reach uh, that that is called diamond soul. A soul, a consciousness that transforms life, not only in the three-dimensional world, but in the whole tree of life, as you know. Because right now, we are in the very bottom of the tree of life, which is called, according to Kabbalah, Malkut, which is the physical body. But Malkut, of course, is in relation with the whole nature. Problem is that we receive life mechanically, automatically, and we do not understand life because we identify with it. So the only way to discover that identification that we do uh, against life is by observing yourself. But we have to know what is this self that you are observing. Because when you discover the nature of the physical body, you have to understand that this physical body is alive because of your being. That, that we call monad. That monad, of course, abides in the sixth dimension. But in order for the physical body to be alive, we need that element, or we will say it, infinite microscopical elements that will give life to every single atom of our physical body. So every single atom of our physical body has that that we call uh, consciousness. That consciousness is nothing but a microcosmic part of our monad. We call it uh, small monads or microcosmic monads that are precisely uh, put in activity our own atoms in the physical body. These atoms make molecules. These molecules make cells, and the cells make organs. So, every organ in our physical body acts according to those monads. But those monads, of course, are acting according to the law. Because every physical body that we receive is the action of karma. That's why we have the physical body that we have and the life that we have. Because our monad, the main monad that is outside of the body, applies the law from above. But that monad obeys the law, the superior law. That's why we say in the prayer, our will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, the law of superior law is accomplished, but not in the earth. So when we start doing the will of God on the earth, is when we are, of course, starting to transform life in the right way. But fortunately, the Son of God, that Buddha or that child that, that we are, uh, scarcely listened the voice of the monad, the main, the principal, above. Because we are identified with this nature, this society. And for that is precisely the, the main point in the Gnostic work. To be in nature, to be in any place in society, transforming life to the senses, but without forgetting 
that we are inside transforming it. Because we cannot transform life in the right way if we are not aware that we are inside. So therefore the self-remembrance is important. But remember that when we said self-remembrance, it's not to remember the physical body. The physical body has to be observed. That is the self of service. The self observed is a physical body. But the, obs the observer is the consciousness. And that's precisely that we have to comprehend intellectually in order to situate ourselves in the place that we need to be in order for that point to observe the self. In this case, the self that is observed is of course that uh, element that is trapped in the ego. And also we will say that self that is not trapped. Because uh, any awakened master when has no ego is continually observing himself. For that always we uh, talk about the different parts of the self. And uh, we say that we have a physical body, as we already explained, that is uh, active according to the law, the mechanical law of karma. But we need to be conscious of that physical body in order to manage that law consciously. Because unfortunately that law acts in us mechanically. So when we are conscious of our physical body, we start managing that law consciously and doing, as we said uh, yesterday, those negotiations that we need to do in order to manage our life. So above the physical body, we have the vital body, or called also ethereal body, which is the superior part of the physical body. That's the life foundation of the physical body, which is being photographed right now by the conventional science of this day and age. But of course, Gnosticly speaking, we know about this ethereal body or bioplastic body since many years ago, many centuries ago, eons ago. Problem is that with our physical senses, we cannot see the vital body. You see that Kirlian camera that was invented in Russia is photographing the vitality of the matter. That matter that is not only the matter related with the physical body, but the plants, minerals, etc. If we are uh, a little bit psychic, we can observe that around the physical body is like an aura, an halo of light. Everybody has that. And uh, commonly that is a blue light color. That is precisely the energy that penetrates and co-penetrates the physical body in order to be the physical body to be alive. In reality, the physical body is tetra-dimensional because the, physical, uh, the vital body is the fourth dimension of it. Tetra in Greek means four. So, we have to be aware also of that. That's why we gave many lectures in order to know how to nourish the vital body. Because many diseases that appear in this physical world are uh, based in the vital body, rooted in the vital body. 
like cancer, for instance, is rooted in the vital body. If we treat the vital body, then we can cure some diseases in this physical body. So, the true science of medicine should uh, be based in the fourth and third dimension uh, in relation with the physical body, in order to heal it. But of course, some sicknesses uh, go beyond the vital body. As you know, we also have emotions. Because these two bodies, vital and physical, are the necessary vehicles in order for us to manifest in this uh, nature, in this society. In order, as we say, to be alive. But beyond that, we have our emotions, our feelings. Nobody can deny that uh, we have feelings and emotions, but we cannot see them. We only can sense them, but not with the five senses. Because if I ask you, how do you sense your feelings, your emotions? You have to admit that it's not through the five senses of the physical body. Somehow you feel it is in this area. That's what we call the emotional brain, which is related with the grand sympathetic nervous system. So we will say that the grand sympathetic nervous system around this area is a vehicle, the physical vehicle for our emotions, our feelings, to act. That is what, in esotericism, is called Kama Rupa, a vehicle of desire. Kama is desire. Between parentheses, this is something that we have to, to understand here, because there is a word that we were talking yesterday about Kama Duro. Some people mistake this word with karma, duro. It's not karma, duro. It's kama. Kama means desire. Kama rupa is vehicle of desires. So all of us has a kama rupa. And the kama duro is based on that kama rupa. Which is, of course, the strong uh, type of karma that we have to pay related with desire. Because when we study the ego as well, we discover that it is rooted in desire. But we have to understand that desire is in this area, mainly, right, with the Kama Rupa. And this body of desire is what many schools of esotericism call it uh, astral body. But in reality, it's not an astral body. Because the astral body is a luxury that only a few people can have. You have to build it. And in order to build the real astral body, which is the vehicle of the soul, you have to control your desires, your feelings, your emotions. And that's precisely the most difficult part of this path in which we are walking in. The control of desires. Because we easily can control the mind, our body. If we want to walk, we walk. If we want to stop, we stop. If we want to jump, we do it. Or be still. If we're thinking in something bad, we do the effort. And we stop thinking in that. But with the feelings, when you are angry, and you said, I don't want to be angry and to be happy uh, immediately is not, is not possible. It's very difficult. And it's because the ego is very strong in that area. Really, the, uh, the great joy or the great goal of a Gnostic is to conquer desire, to conquer emotions. And the whole work that we do always is also related with this area. Those that succeed build the astral body. But how are we going to control that, those emotions 
if we don't observe ourselves in this area is where we have to observe ourselves what type of egos from the fifth dimension comes emerge you see the kamarupa is uh, gravitated or gravitates in the fifth dimension you feel it here your three-dimensional body but if you go and observe from which dimension or from which place is this emotion or this feeling coming from you discover that it is beyond the physical body in the fifth dimension that we call eternity because the fourth dimension is time and the fifth is eternity beyond time both dimensions are circular it's not like people think straight line time is circular eternity is also circular when we go to sleep we go into eternity then we have our dreams and with that circle that uh, uh, sleep state finishes then we return into the physical world the physical body is uh, tired we return again and again this is a circle a cycle that we always perform every day so you see there that we are related also with the body of desires so this body of desires acts wants to be satisfied wants to feed desires through the five senses of the physical body so most of the time when we are in this world so the senses we see we hear we smell, we taste, we touch, that will satisfy the ego. So we have to observe that in order to discover what type of uh, ego we have in relation with the physical body. That's why the Master Samael on the Or is, uh, explains that before going into meditation in order to comprehend an ego first you have to catch it you have to know from which brain of the three brains that the physical body has is, is that ego emerging because any ego utilizes three brains always the motor brain in this area which is called motor instinctual sexual brain the emotional brain in the heart, between the heart and the navel, and the intellectual brain. Those are the three brains that any ego always utilizes. But any ego emerges always from any of the three brains. Of course, if uh, you are uh, touching your feelings, somebody hurts your feelings, immediately an ego will emerge from this area and if you are attentive if you are self-observant then you will discover it but you cannot self-discover uh, if you are not self-observant of yourself you cannot be self-observant of yourself if you don't remember in yourself you see you have to remember yourself but then, in order to know what is that that we have to be, to remember, we have to understand that it's not anybody in relation with the bodies that we are talking here. We are not the physical body, we are not the vital body, we are not the, we are not the kamarupa, the body of desires. Are we then the mind? 
because that's the only body that rests here or that we had to dock. You know that here in the head we have uh, the brain, the intellectual brain. We utilize that brain in order to think, in order to rationalize. And that uh, brain is a vehicle of another body. That is called, uh, theosophically, the inferior manas. Manas means mind. From that word comes the word man. That's why when it says we are man, it says that we are mind. In a certain way, we will say that, yeah, we are more mind than anything. But that mind is not the human. You see that? Man, again. The human is a mind that we have to build. Which is superior to this... Uh, common, ordinary mind that we use, which is the animal mind. Because when we uh, study your mind in meditation, eventually we always, the goal of meditation is to quiet the mind. After quieting, of course, the emotional center or the kamarupa, and after relaxing the body. Because this is what you do. First, you relax the body, and then you relax your emotions, your mood, and then you go into your mind, which is really the donkey, which is always thinking, telling you, what are you doing there? Get up, go there and make some money, or go and eat. It depends what ego is there, you know? advising you to do what you don't want to do. You want to comprehend yourself, but your mind is not interested in that. Your animal mind wants to fornicate, wants to engulf himself with food or go to play basketball or volleyball or ping pong or any ball, you know, because all those games are related with balls, <laughs> right? But meditation is a discipline of the mind. So you have to control your mind. You have to observe your mind too. That's other vehicle. Do not commit the mistake of saying, I am the mind. Because you are not the mind. Talking from the real way or the real point of view. Because if we talk from the subjective point of view, you are the mind, of course. Because most of the time you are mind. But the real self is not the mind. And this is precisely what we have to understand. We are not the mind. But we have to observe that mind. Because that mind is the self. Is is the self of servants. The self of servant element that we need to observe. This is what we have to understand. We have to self-observe ourselves. We have to remember ourselves. But the mind is also another self or part of ourselves that needs to be observed, but is not ourselves. Do you understand that? Because the ego is mind, and it's the foul self that we have, unfortunately. In that mind, that ego acts to the brain. And of course, most of the time, because as they say, that we are homo sapiens. Mind that think. We are always identified with our thoughts. And the mind really should be a vehicle of the spirit. The mind really should serve the spirit and uh, 
transform life in the right way. But in order for the mind to transform life in the right way, it has to be like that lake. You see? Calm. When you see that your mind is calm, and then reflects the light of the being, which is the sun, in a perfect way. And that is what is called the macrocosmos reflected in the microcosmos. That's why they say that the man is the micro of the macro. That micro is the mind that should reflect the macro, the spirit. That spirit is hum in Sanskrit, H-U-M. Many monks in the Eastern Asia vocalize that mantra in order to be in contact with their own particular individual spirit. The hum, hum. And of course, it's because they want to put their manas, their mind, on the service of the hum. They want to reach the level of human. But in this world, as you know, everybody calls himself a human or herself a human. They don't even believe in the spirit. There are atheists that call themselves humans, and this is really a joke, bad joke. If they are atheists, don't call themselves humans. Call themselves apes, maybe, but not humans. Yeah, or evolved, because they believe in evolution, but no human. A human is spirit in the mind, united, and this is precisely what we want. But for that, of course, we had to eradicate that inferior mind that we have, which is animal, and to create a superior mind, a solar mind. And that's only possible after creating a superior emotional body, which is called the astral body. So a real human being is a being that has solar mind and astral solar body, acting in the intellectual brain and the emotional brain. And this is acting, always in union with the spirit. But of course, to become that level of being, we had to work in order to observe that which is against that. And it's inside. Inside of us have a lot of enemies in the mind, a lot of enemies in the heart and in the sex, in the three brains. It's all the enemies. That's why the Bible called those three enemies Judas, Pilate, and Caiaphas, the three traitors of Jesus. <coughs> or as in the Exodus, the three traitors of Moses. Uh, Datan, Abiram, and Kore. And in every single story of the Bible or any religion, you find always these three traitors. The three daughters of Mara that were tempting Buddha when he was meditating under the body tree. And of course, whatever name you want to give to those uh, three elements are inside of us. So when you are in meditation, those three elements come to bother you, to stop you meditating, to do any type of work in yourself. It is precisely the great battle that you had to perform when you are meditating. But if you discipline yourself, you start feeling a lot of courage in order to analyze, to comprehend but you have to observe first. 
Because if you want friends, as if you are a police in any city, and uh, they send you to work, of course, as a policeman or policewoman, you have to go and catch the evil guys or girls. But you cannot go to the neighborhood and says, you come here, you look like you're a thief, come to me. Just like that now, right? You have to be observant and to find those delinquents in the very act. And then you have proof. And say, aha, you were still in that, come to me. Take you to the court before the judge. Because the judge will, will ask you, well, what is this individual here? What do you bring here? He's a thief. Why? I saw him. Do you have proof? Yeah. This is what he was stealing. And the uh, prints are here. Oh, I have, uh, because we are now in the 21st century, I have this camera. Look. I caught him. Oh, yeah. You're a thief. I sentence you to prison. But the court has to pass a, how do you say it, a, a trial. Same thing with us. When we go to meditate, first you have to catch the delinquent. But uh, if you are asleep all day, why are you going to meditate? You know? There are policemen that dare go and only eat donuts. They don't catch anything. Yeah? But you have to be observant. In order to see in which city, or we will say not city, town, which town? The intellectual town, the emotional town, or the motorsexual, instinctual town. Hmm? So once you catch it, you say, aha, well, I get you. Now, I will uh, put you in trial, but not now because I'm busy. You keep doing your chores of your life. And if you are a servant, you catch another one, and another one, and another one. So when the moment in meditation comes, you say, oh my God, I, I caught a lot of delinquents today. In the morning, in the afternoon, in the midday, whatever, in different places. If I want to try all of them, it's impossible. I have the ask to dedicate myself to one. And when that is trial and executed, I will take my time with another one. So then you just sit down in meditation and you do your, what well, is your retrospection, your analysis. Which one deserves to be comprehended or to be trialed right now? And to that is precisely what you have to apply your, your meditation. But you have to understand that the ego always acts in the three brains. I caught you in the emotional brain. But I noticed when you took my intellectual brain, you start thinking in that, in this and that. And when you were acting through my body, but you are saying that because you remember, you were observing yourself. Then you go, you go deep down into your psyche. Or we will say into your subconsciousness, into your unconsciousness. But for that you have to remember yourself. Remember that, unfortunately, we are 97% delinquents and 3% of servants. The observer is 3%. And the observed is 97%. So the, the poor police is really very weak. Because the gangs are very too many inside of you. So that consciousness that is free, 3%, has to do super efforts. In order to remember that it's inside... That remembrance is what the master call in the in the book uh, 
filial, love. You have to put in activity this 3% in order to feel that you are a child of God. In order to feel that you are a child of God, you have to remember God. But remember that God is not outside, but inside of you. He's your monad. So you have to remember that it's always there. That's why, talking with the Master Samael on the or, I asked him one time, what is the best mantra, Master, in order to remember my being, in order to observe myself in the correct way? In concentration, the best mantra for concentration, in order to remember your being, is OM. OM. Tatsat. OM. Tatsat. OM. Tatsat. OM. All the time, in your mind. So then you are pronouncing that in remembering yourself, strengthening it. Because that goes into the pineal gland. That's precisely where you have to be seated. Physical, physically, you are seated there in those benches. But where you have to be seated is in your pineal gland. Because you are not the body. Your body is seated there. Or put it wherever you like it. But you have to be seated in the pineal gland. Because you are the soul. You are the consciousness. And by sitting there is how you remember. I am a child of God. Child of the monad. My spirit. My whom. And by feeling yourself there, sitting there in the pineal gland, you do the rest. From the pineal gland, you go into your brain. You say your mental body. From the pineal gland, you go a little bit down and you observe your emotional brain. Which is your emotional body, your kama rupa. And deep down into your motor, instinctual, sexual brain. Movements, actions, emotions, thoughts. And this is how you remember yourself, observe yourself. So then, during meditation, you analyze that particular delinquent that you caught in any of your three brains. But during meditation, you have to comprehend how that delinquent that you caught, for instance, in the emotional brain, acted after that in your mental and in your motor brain. I repeat, while in meditation you have to to prolong that self-discovering. Because in self-discovering is comprehension. And uh, knowing yourself. That's precisely what we have to do. Is We want to know ourselves. Then as the police, after doing all of that, he presents the proofs. The proofs to, uh, to the judge. In order for that delinquent to be sentenced. Same with you. After you comprehend that. And you are sure that you comprehend it completely. That you, miss, you didn't miss any detail. About that particular psychological aggregate. That you caught in self-observation. You self-comprehended it. Now... You can annihilate it. Now the poor delinquent could be killed easily. But you cannot kill it. You can comprehend it. You must comprehend it. But annihilate it. In order to annihilate that delinquent, you have to invoke a superior power to the mind. Superior power to your consciousness. You have to apply to your inner being. In this case, your Divine Mother, because she has the power. You see, your monad abides there, 
right? The Father in heaven. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. This is remembering your God. And that prayer is marvelous. But you have to remember that you are a child of God when you are doing it. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. You want the kingdom of God to come into you? Well, open your mind. But if you, when you ask that, in your mind is filled with thieves, filled with criminals, then God doesn't mingle with that. So then clean that. And that's precisely the meditation. But uh, your Divine Mother, which is the feminine aspect of your God, descends always into your physical body. She transformed herself for the love of his child, her child. She has no form. But she's life, his nature. She enters through your nose, through what you eat, through what you hear, or through the senses. This is how she enters. And transforms herself into blood. She's the blood that becomes sexual matter. And then she hides herself as sexual matter in the sexual organs. Unfortunately, people ignore this, that the creative power of God is there. You see, when they say the creative power of God, we are talking about the Divine Mother. Because you cannot deny that we were created in the womb of our mother. We were nine months there. She created us. So that force, of course, is in our sexual organs. Unfortunately, people uh, spill that force. Put it out of their bodies. If we put that force out of our bodies, then we cannot apply to that force. Because God applies that force, which is called the Divine Mother, the Curry Power, in order to destroy any psychological aggregate, previously comprehended in meditation. So therefore, we need to accumulate, we need to receive that mother nature every single day. If we are single with pranayama, if we are married with sexual transmutation. And then the Divine Mother enters as fire, because she hides herself within that sexual matter. That's what uh, the, in the East they call it Kundalini. So that Kundalini or fire of the Holy Spirit rises in the spinal column. If we are single, rises in two polarities, Ida Pingala. And of course, when you ask to your Divine Mother, who is in heaven, the annihilation of any ego, she utilizes that energy that you are rising here, because she is the same element, in order to destroy that particular psychological aggregate that you comprehended. But you have to save the energy. Because if you ask her, Mother of mine, destroy me this ego. This is what, give me the weapons. I have the power, but I need fire. If you don't have fire there, how is she going to do it? That's why the Master Samael says, any single person can destroy 50% of uh, their own ego, but not beyond. Because the Divine Mother can utilize that single energy of a single person, that 50%, but there are certain egos, certain psychological elements inside, which are very heavy, very strong. So the Divine Mother needs a strong weapon in order to annihilate those psychological aggregates. And that strong weapon rises in the Shushumna Canal, 
You see, Ida Pingala is for single people. But married people is Ida Pingala plus Shushuna. So that fire of Shushuna awakes with the union of men and women. When they put together, when they mix together, there are two, two polarities. You see, there are two, two polarities. And uh, when you ask your Divine Mother in the sexual act, if you are married, Mother of mine, destroy me this ego that I comprehend it. And then a triple power descends from hell, from heaven, into hell, which is us. No ego can resist that. It's pulverized immediately. But pulverized if you comprehend it before. Because when you are comprehending your ego, you are taking out your consciousness. In other words, you are learning how to transform life in the right way. Because that ego was transforming life in the wrong way. You have to understand that. Ego is a bad transformer of life. Consciousness, free consciousness, united with God, with the Spirit, is a right transformer of life. So what we are doing in meditation comprehension is to see life in the right way. To transform life in the right way. Because it's pretty obvious that in this planet, all of us are transforming life in the wrong way. That's why this society is a chaos. We are individual chaoses. And we have to destroy that chaos and to make life of it by comprehending it. So that's why the married couple, when they are united in the sexual act, they have to say, husband says, Mother of mine, destroy me this ego of jealousy that I felt when my wife was talking with somebody else in such place. The wife has to repeat the same thing. Just mother of mine, destroy me this uh, ego of jealousy. I mean, you don't have to give so, too many details you don't, you, if you don't want to be in, more in trouble. Just say that. Enough. Don't give too many details. Right? But just say the ego. Then the wife has to repeat the same words in the very sexual act that her husband is saying. And when he finishes, and then it's the turn of the wife. And then she has to say, Mother of mine, destroy me this ego of anger that I have against my poor husband always, when I act against him. And then I have to repeat the same thing. And like that, they're acting with, you see, two forces. So the ego is really being destroyed in that way. Especially those heavy ones. So the three steps, as you see, is to catch the ego, to comprehend the ego, and then to trial it, and to destroy it after that with the power of the Divine Mother. The Divine Mother has the power to destroy, if you comprehend. Because if you didn't comprehend that ego in the right way, it's still something missing in your psyche, the Divine Mother won't destroy it. Because that ego immediately, when she utilizes its power, is sent to hell, to the infra dimensions in order to be annihilated there little by little. It's taken from you, down. But the consciousness is already out. The genie of the lamp is already out of the battle. But if the genie, or part of the genie is still bottled up into the battle, the Divine Mother won't destroy it, because then your consciousness will go to hell. And this is what we're trying to avoid here, the second death. We want to die here, but not to go to hell. But that's the process. Is to do the work of mastery. You see, that's precisely the the way. And of course, remember always that uh, you have to observe uh, these three elements. It's another element that uh, I was missing when I was talking about the vital body, which is the personality. Personality 
is another vehicle that you utilize in life in order to be in communication with society. If you are a doctor, of course, in your personality, you have the knowledge, the necessary intellectual elements in order to give advice, whatever. And that is in your personality, the knowledge of being a doctor, of being an engineer, of being an architect. Whatever is your profession. In your personality, you have the language that you speak, or the languages that you speak. I have, for instance, in my personality, the knowledge that I utilize in order to communicate, but uh, also the knowledge that we have in our personality has to be cognizant, or cognizant knowledge. For that, we have to meditate and comprehend what we know. And of course, remember that the ego also acts to the personality. And the personality always utilizes the three brains. That's why we have to be aware of ourselves when we are in activity, in any place, especially when we work. Because uh, the personality learns how to do things mechanically. And that's why uh, most of the time we are mechanically, when we know already what to do. So we have to observe ourselves, to observe that personality that knows everything in relation with uh, your work, your job, in order not to do it mechanically, in order to utilize the personality with your consciousness. It's not easy, but we have to do it step by step. This is how we learn how to place ourselves under the service of our own particular individual God. This is how we die in ourselves. This is how we apply that statement that says, Whosoever wants to come after me, deny himself. This is only part of the denying the self. You see? In order to deny the self, you have to observe the self. In order to observe the self, you have to remember your true self. So those are the steps. Of course, it is good to know it first intellectually, in order to apply it practically. In the practical life, you have to be there all the time. If you are eating, you have to eat. If you are walking, you have to walk. If you are talking with somebody, talk with somebody. Meaning, do that consciously. Because sometimes we are talking with people face to face. And all of a sudden we say, excuse me, what did you say? Or oh, I didn't hear, polite. But the thing is that we were not there. We were outside of the body, thinking in something. We were there, but the consciousness was outside. Marty Samael gave us an example in Mexico about how to be there. He says, you know, the consciousness is like a flashlight. In the night, when you turn on your flashlight, you put the flashlight wherever you want it, in order to search for anything. Same thing as the consciousness. In your daily life, in your darkness of your life, because you don't know yourself, you are in darkness, apply that light, that flashlight, which is your consciousness. Direct your consciousness to anywhere you want. But in order to direct the consciousness, you have to be there. Because you are the consciousness. To serve here, there, always. If you're not there, that light is everywhere. Like that, uh, how do you call that uh, sparkling ball there inside there, going everywhere. Yeah. We have to, to be here. And that's precisely that many people are identified with a sparkling ball. Different lights that come from outside. Never identify with that. Be inside. Know how to apply the light. 
Remember that it's written. In the beginning, God created the physical body and the psyche. Or in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Same thing. But the earth was empty. I mean, he was not there. And without form, chaos. That's how we are. This earth is in chaos, has no form, it's void, has no light. The darkness, he says, was in the face of the abyss. What is that abyss? Subconsciousness, unconsciousness, infraconsciousness, that is our abyss. If we close our eyes, you see the only darkness. But when we apply this exercise with practices every day, and then we remember God, as a child of God. And then God says, let there be light. And the light of the consciousness is guided. And little by little, there was light here. It was led there. And the light is growing, growing, expanding, expanding until we become illuminated, completely an enlightened being, a Buddha. That's the process. Do you have questions? How Lucifer is ministered by the being in order for him to help us? That is your, your question. Of course, he's asking about Lucifer. Lucifer, of course, is an, a part of the being. Lucifer is not some individual like people think that is outside. Lucifer is inside. It's only one part of the being that can enter into an individual like us which are mess, the chaos. God cannot enter. But when God, when we enter into this path, we really are serious in this path, and then God sends or put there an element that is capable of being inside and help the work. And that individual is called Lucifer. He mingles with darkness. And then Lucifer, of course, is mingled with us. It's mingled with lust, with anger, with pride. That's precisely the sacrifice of Lucifer. Part of the monad that uh, needs, the monad needs to become a master monad. But in order to master the consciousness which is identified there in, with this life, he sends Lucifer. Lucifer means carrier of light. But that Lucifer is a very tricky guy because uh, he knows that in order for you to make light in the darkness, you need to catch the devil. You see, in this case, it's not Lucifer, the devil. The devil is you, the ego. Lucifer is only helping you. You need to catch the devil. You need to catch the psychological aggregate, the delinquent, that's the devil. And in order for that to be caught, need to emerge from within into the surface of the three brains and in order to emerge from inside you need the proper psychological gymnasium as I said uh, last night we said that there are three gymnasiums home work relatives and then in the street with acquaintances with people that you don't know sometimes. The gymnasium number A, if you're a man, is your wife. Because she knows you very well. And for the woman, the gymnasium number A is her husband. Between them, they have the Mahabharata, a great battle. <laughs> they cut the defects there. And in your job, in your with your 
relatives, they also have a small battle. Not as strong like your home, but still is. And then in the streets, it's another, the third type of gymnasium. The circumstances that happen in your life, sometimes you get uh, upset because in the post office, uh, the teller is treating you uh, respectfully and uh, you're making a big line there and a lot of people are swearing because too much time in order to go and to put one letter, whatever. You got to be patient. But sometimes you see that happens naturally. But when you are serious in your work, Lucifer comes and says, okay, I'm going to help you now. Right? And put the person really that you need in order for the anger to come out. Uh, and this is because you are entering into the path that happened with Adam and Eve. You know that in Lemuria, Lucifer was released, but the poor Adam and Eve in Lemuria were naive at that time and were tempted easily and defeated easily. But you have to be aware always in your life that Lucifer is there, sometimes trying to make you fall. And he does always the unbelievable in order for, to make you fall. But if you triumph, deep down he becomes happy. He says, I'm becoming a good coach. That's why the Master Samuel says that Lucifer is a golden friend. But sometimes, you know, uh, he is uh, mean. Because when he puts ordeals in relation with the heart and you are controlling those egos of your heart, sometimes you cry. And you said, leave me alone. Just don't put me ordeals right now. I have enough. I have to meditate in that. Just leave me alone for one week, please. Something like that, you know. But he's ready always to help us. Unfortunately, this humanity treats Lucifer in the wrong way. They don't love him. But he's there in order to help us. The only way to help us is by taking your egos out of your psyche in order to show you. This is what you have to annihilate. And when they take your anger because somebody is touching your, your feelings, your self-love, self-esteem, your pride, your vanity, then you feel really bad. But this is the only way that uh, really that uh, element works in us. This is how you have to understand that element, Lucifer. It's not that like the people think some bad guy there, they're trying to conquer humanity. No, trying to help. Fortunately, every single element of this humanity had fallen into temptation. But with the Gnostics, we know that he put over the temptation, but we have to defeat it in order to develop virtues. And the only way to develop virtues is through this way, meditation, comprehension. And then Lucifer comes as best friend. We transform him into an archangel of light. That's your answer. Another question? Well, the comprehension has to be related with the three brains always. Because life enters into our, through the five senses into our three brains. Right? You have to comprehend in which way that impression of life has to enter into your psyche in the right way. What is the right way? Upright thought. Upright feeling. Upright action. If there is in your comprehension upright thought, upright feeling, and upright action, there's comprehension. No justification, no condemnation. If you meditate there or say, oh, I am evil guy, you are, I am very bad. No, that's, that's not comprehension. That's condemnation. There's not comprehension there. You don't have to condemn or justify yourself. 
As you said, uh, this beggar came to my way when I was walking in the streets and he was asking for alms and I gave him $10. I'm a good guy. No. Not justify that you are good. Go and meditate and comprehend if that good deed was, is really good or bad. Because my, maybe that beggar was a marijuana, marijuana, something that looked, smoked marijuana and took those $10 and bought marijuana. So you were cooperating with evil there, with vice. So where's the good of that? Love is a law, but cognizant love, not just mechanical. Many people do just mechanical love or good things, but at the end are bad. So that's precisely the way you, you have to comprehend, not to miss anything. And in every type of meditation, that's precisely the discovering of the virtue. Upright thought, upright feeling, and upright action. That is the opposite, is the ego, which acts in the three brains in the wrong way. And that's precisely life, to know how to live, consciously. Do you have another question? That happens after you annihilate the whole ego. Then you can annihilate your personality and only the being remains. But for that you have to annihilate the ego completely. Before that, the personality has to be utilized. Because we need it. In order to be in communication with society. Master Samael annihilated his personality at the very end. When you were talking with him, there was no personality there. Only Samael on the oar. But we still are here, yeah. What is right to give, uh, what is right, uh, wrong not to give? Oh, th that's precisely the point. That's why you, we were doing this morning, e -A -O that you had to put in activity your chakras. Because sometimes there are people there that are asking and you feel in your heart, really, right? You're being told them, he really needs it. And then you give. Because you know, right? You, you, you are sure. But being guided only by the ego, sometimes you might do good. Sometimes. But most of the time, you know, a lot of thieves are being rich now. Send me money, send me money, send me money. And they make uh, life like that, you know. Or they're asking. But some people in the street really need them. But you have to feel it in your heart. You have to know. Because you, you cannot cooperate with a beggar in order to go to drink a bottle of liquor. So then you are cooperating with evil. Uh, it's not good. So you have to know how to do good. That's the point here. It means that you have to choose. When you sit down and start doing your meditation, what you first do is a retrospection of that particular day. And then you see all your actions and reactions and all the ego that appear in the different parts of your, your body. And then you said, well, this is the stronger one. You have to know which. And then you apply meditation to it. Well, uh, you have to go for the stronger one. The weak, but otherwise, you see, but you can choose the weak one if you want. But then you are giving fav 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 favoritism to yourself. Why you are keeping that strong one? You know what I mean? <laughs>
the only thing also, sometimes in meditation, you can meditate one ego in 10 minutes, sometimes in 15 minutes, sometimes half an hour, sometimes one hour. Sometimes you have to rest this, it is too much. Let me go and drink a little bit of coffee and come back. Right? And it takes a long time. So it depends, right? Of the circumstances. Intuition is developed by, by doing good, but conscious good. Right? Sacrifice for humanity. Right? For instance, here, we're doing sacrifice for humanity. That's good. Conscious good. This is good for you. Right? No way that you are going to apply this uh, in the wrong way. The ego is the enemy. It has to be annihilated. And of course, by supporting any type of sacrifice that you really know that is for good for humanity. That is going to help that humanity. You see? Right? Not the ego. Because some people call themselves humans, but they are not. That part of the consciousness that needs to be developed. And know how to do it. And of course, by vocalizing the mantra, Om Masi Padme Yom. That helps intuition. Vocalizing that one hour daily helps. Acts, acts, acts through the three brains. Because the three brains are in the physical body. The ego comes from the subconscious. And when it appears there, acts through the three brains. If you act, I mean, you find the ego outside of your body in the astral plane, also has three brains. Because all these uh, bodies of nature in the humanoid whether in the physical plane or the astral plane, have always this uh, triple, or the master called the, the three-brain biped creature, right? With three brains. And, uh, but some of them have their habitat in any of the three. But they always utilize the three. But they hide in one. For instance, self-esteem is here. Hatred. But when hatred comes, takes your mind, and then you start analyzing what to say to this person in order to defeat it or in order to hurt it, right? So it's your mind there. And if you act and punch the person in the face, well, it's, it's the motor brain. Yeah, that's precisely. You have to discover in any of the three, but to comprehend it in the three. And annihilation in the three as well. When you imagine your Divine Mother applying the lance, which is a symbol of the sexual force, you have to see her with your imagination, killing the ego here, here, and here. Right? And you have to imagine that you are a flame. Your sexual energy is enveloping you. And the ego is being burned. And the sexual act is better because this is a lot of fire there. And this is how the ego dies. Yeah. Oh, but that's uh, easy. If you are in the same circumstances, in the same event, and if you react differently, it is obvious because your consciousness is there. But if you act in the same way, well, you didn't comprehend. You need more comprehension, right? The same events of life will give you the test in order to see. That's why in this path, when somebody receiving initiation, degrees, etc., at the end comes the test, the qualification, in order to see if you really comprehend it. And then the trials comes to you in abundance and then you have to show that you really are an angel among devils but if you discover a little devil there among the elements then you still need more comprehension easy
right? Yeah. Comprehension in the 49 levels of the mind. Every physical, uh, I mean, every element, every psychological element works in the 49 levels of the mind. In the end, uh, all the bodies that we have are mind. Uh, in the beginning, we have to start with the seven levels of the physical body. The first level of the physical body is called intellect. First, you comprehend intellectually. Then you go deep down into your subconsciousness and you comprehend your egos in another level. In another level. Seven levels of the physical body. But beyond that, of course, you have to awake in the other bodies in order to annihilate the other levels. You cannot annihilate, for instance, the level of Chesed, which is the spirit, where the defects disguise themselves as virtues. How are you going to annihilate that if you are not awakened in that level? That's why you just go little by little. While you awaken this level, the consciousness is expanding, expanding, and one day you will reach those levels. When that, those levels, uh, uh, you reach those levels, then you start annihilating your egos uh, deep to the 49 levels. Somebody that is awakened can go in meditation, even there. Yeah, as my friend says here, some uh, roots of some egos are very shallow, although they are very deep. There are egos, as we were explaining yesterday, really with a 96 loss that goes just to limbo. If we annihilate those egos really with limbo, then we go, go deeper into the infra dimensions to go to other levels. But in the beginning, just be aware of the physical plane. And if you, if you have experiences in the astral plane, which are the levels of consciousness, uh, which is the ego acting through your dreams, well, you can comprehend your dreams, do it. There are deeper levels. Because sometimes, there are egos here in the physical plane that because you are aware, you are always on guard, you don't allow them to be fed. And you're just comprehending, but when they go out of your, your body, and then they act there. They commit adultery, they fornicate, they, they fight, etc. And when you return to your body, you say, oh my goodness, I'm still a devil. There. But here I'm controlling myself, but out there, the ego is controlling me. So you have then keep your meditation in relation with those dreams in order to control him. Remember that Plato says that man is known by his dreams. And women too. Her dreams. Yeah. Remember the question that uh, our sisters uh, asked there? We have 49 levels. And each level, there are many aggregates. Right? So you annihilate all aggregates related with that level, then you go on to another level. But maybe you annihilate one ego related with uh, one uh, uh, level and uh, still exists in the other levels. The same ego, but in, in, in other ways, right? So that's why in order to annihilate the whole ego of lust, for instance, you have annihilated the ego from the intellectual until the 49 level, which is, of course, meditation, initiation, trials, etc. The same for the other rest of the egos that we have. Well, as I said, unfortunately, because we are identified too much with the intellect, we are unaware of the, of the other six levels. But uh, if you put in activity the chakras, the seven chakras, that's why the master insisted that we have to put in activity the other senses, then you will know the other levels of your physical 
And you will see by self-observing yourself how sometimes in the physical world people don't say anything when somebody insults them, but in other levels in the physical plane, they are killing people and stabbing them, insulting them, and they are just quiet. Right? Those are the levels. Observe yourself, you will see. Sometimes I hear from uh, some men that they want to control their lust. Certain beautiful women pass to them and they don't look at them physically. But the ego inside is this. You know, they see it. And they look at them, so still there. Right? So observe, self observance. Women too. In order to finish with this lecture, let me tell you something. Uh, one day a woman asked the master, is that right, master, that we women are not so lustful like men? And then the master says, the devil is devil with skirts or with pants. Same thing. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah,